Hello, this is Dr. Phil Rosencrantz again. Welcome to EGR 403 Online. We're now in lecture number 8, which is about chapter 6, Annual Worth Analysis. If you go to slide number 2, we'll look at our big picture again. And we're dealing with our second um, analysis method, the Annual Worth Method. Let's go to slide number 3. What we do with Annual Worth uh, Method is we resolve all of our cash flows into uniform series, into annual cash flows, and then we compare those. In Chapter 5, with present worth analysis, we found the present worth of all of our cash flows and compared those. But in Chapter 6, we're converting to uh, annual costs, annual benefits. If we subtract the equivalent uniform annual cost from the equivalent uniform annual benefit, we get what we call equivalent uniform annual worth and that is very helpful in our calculations as well. As we look on this slide here that we're on, number three, if we have a present value, the way to convert that into an annual worth is to multiply by the A over P factor. And in Excel, the function would be the PMT factor and if you want to put a negative in front of it to keep the sign uh, the way you'd like, you can do that. If we have a salvage value, something that comes at the end of the project, to get the equivalent annual uh, cost of that or benefit of that, we treat that salvage value as a future value and we use the A over F factor. So if we're given a present value or uh, a future value at the end of the project, we can find the uniform series that is equivalent to those. And uh, let's go on to slide number four. Here um, we can see that the uh, equivalent uniform annual cost uh, has some equivalent to the present worth of cost by multiplying by the A over e P factor that's been mentioned. And uh, if we have an equivalent, if we want to find the equivalent uniform annual benefit from a present worth of benefits, we can multiply it by the A over P factor as well. So the equivalent uniform annual worth is equal to the equivalent uniform annual benefits minus the equivalent uniform annual cost. Now the e equivalent uniform annual cost, you'll notice, is decreased if you add cost, it's increased if you add benefit. And again, if you're using Excel functions, it's the PMT function that you would use. Now what if we have a cash flow that doesn't come at the very beginning or the very end of the analysis period? How do we find the equivalent uniform annual cost or benefit of that? Well, the easiest way to do it is to find the present worth of that cost. In other words, bring it back to year zero and then multiply it by the appropriate factor to convert that into an annual cost or benefit. And so sometimes we've got two factors we need to multiply by in order to get a cash flow into an annual cost or benefit. So that's just one of the things that goes along with using this technique. Let's go to slide number five. Again, our criteria pop up and uh, by now you should start to see uh, and understand these fairly easily that uh, for fixed input situation we're going to maximize our equivalent uniform annual benefit. We're trying to get the most out of what we're investing. When we have fixed output situations then we want to minimize equivalent uniform annual cost and where, either, where neither are fixed we want to maximize the equivalent uniform annual worth. Let's look at a couple of examples that will help us and uh, let's start by looking at example 6-5 now this is based on example 5-1 it's the same the same cash flows and but we're just going to solve it using this technique from chapter 6 we're using the equivalent annual worth methodology for device A we have an annual uh, benefit of $300. Well, that's already an equivalent uniform annual benefit. So we have the EUAB for that one. That was simple. For device B, 
when we decompose that into an EUAC and a gradient, we have 400 minus 500 times A over G factor. You notice the 400 is already an, an EUAC, or excuse me, an EUAB. We don't have to do anything to that. Uh, so with the $50, we multiply by the A over G factor. We end up for device B with an equivalent uniform annual benefit of $306.75. And that's better than $300 for device A. So we got the same answer, slightly different approach, and actually a little less calculation because we already had some of the information in uniform series form. All right, Len, now let's look at example 6-6. We've got three plans, A, B, and C, and we've got different costs, labor savings, operating expenses, and uh, scrap value at the end, or the salvage value. And if you go through and you calculate the EUAB minus the EUAC, you come out with three different numbers and alternative A, plan A, has the highest EUAB minus EUAC. So since it has the highest annual worth, that would be the best alternative. That was a nice clean example of this method. Okay, let's go to slide number seven and talk about those analysis period considerations. They were that the analysis period is equal to the alternative lives, or that the analysis period is a common multiple of alternative lives, or that the analysis period is continuing, and uh, finally there could be just some other period as a pro such as project life. Let's go to slide number eight. When the analysis period is equal to the alternative lives, then we just compare the two alternatives uh, directly and that's basically what we did with our first example in this chapter. And it's the case that's most often used in, in the book. But this is rarely the real case in real life. But in terms of trying to make a decision, uh, the um, sometimes it's just the best way to go. And it's better than some of the other options we have. Uh, let's go to slide number nine. If we have a common analysis period because and we're going to use multiple multiple um, alternate lives like we did be in chapter 5 with the repeated course assumption repeated policy assumption then if we want to see what that looks like let's go to uh, example number 6-7 that's really a, uh, worth going to if we calculate the equivalent uniform annual cost, because here what we're trying to do is minimize the equivalent uniform annual cost. If we uh, go through and we calculate what it is for one useful life for uh, pump B, we get $909. Now, that's only for one useful life for pump B. Pump A had a 12-year useful life. So if we're going to repeat the investment for pump B to get it up to 12 years, that's shown on the next page of the example. And if we do that and then we calculate the EUAC, lo and behold, we get an EUAC of $909 again. You'll notice that whether we use the 6-year useful life or we repeated it for a 12-year useful life, we got the same EUAC. Well, that's because of the way the math works out. When we convert everything to equivalent uniform annual cost, we actually get the EUAC for any number of useful lives. Well, the beauty of that is that it simplifies our calculations. And so if you've got a problem or a project where you have uh, this issue of dealing with unequal useful lives, if you use the annual worth uh, techniques, then it saves you a lot of calculations. So that's one of the biggest, um, I think, considerations when dealing with 
uh, annual worth is to be able to simplify your calculations for the multiple life situation. Let's go to slide number 10. Here we're talking about the analysis period for a continuing requirement. If the project will last forever, which nothing does, uh, we're going to use an infinite analysis period. And uh, now that may not be realistic as I mentioned, but we uh, use it often simply because it does simplify calculations. And example 6-9, which I'm not going to go into detail, uh, does use that assumption to simplify some of the calculations. That formula A equals P times I just really is a nice simple one to use. Let's go to slide number 11 and talk about some other, uh, other periods such as the project life. Well a lot of times we are dealing with projects and I think you're going to see projects being more and more the case in the future. And so the project life is very often the analysis period and that's the case in many organizations. So if you have a project life then you might have to treat that as a terminal value and then you use that to chop off your cash flows and figure out what the uh, EUAC would be. And you can look at chap at example 6-10 if you want to get an example of that. Well that's all the depth I want to go into for chapter 6. I think you're starting to see a trend here and uh, in the next chapter we're going to be looking at a slightly different um, analysis technique but again done right it's going to give you the same results. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye.